On Wednesday, March 30th, 2016, more than 400 female students from all over the state attended the first Massachusetts Girls in Trades Conference and Career Fair at IBEW Local 103 in Dorchester, Massachusetts. There were also 45 educators and 50 exhibitors as part of the conference. This was a collaboration of professionals from education, labor, industry, and several unions coming together to provide information about apprenticeship opportunities within the building trades. Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the first of its kind Girls in Trade Conference and Career Fair. My name is Michelle Roach and I'm the Director of, um, Director of Career and Technical Education at Minuteman High School in Lexington, Massachusetts. I'm also the board chair for the Skills USA, and Skills USA is represented here today. Yay! Nice, like, nice job, girls. Um, I also sit on the newly formed advisory board for the Girls in Trade Initiative in Massachusetts. This advisory committee was formed through the efforts of Wynn Everett Resort and Minuteman High School to help increase the number of women entering the construction trades and to provide opportunities, education, and encouragement to young women considering a career in the construction trades. Members of the Girls in Trade Advisory Group represent community organizations, contractors, government agencies, building and trade unions, media outlets, and career and technical education. One, how can we promote and support young women currently enrolled in career and technical education trades programs? Two, how can we develop a pipeline for middle school girls entering CTE high schools with a focus on the trades? And lastly, how can we best connect young women who graduate and have graduated from CTE schools with the opportunities in current fast-growing construction trades? I'm the president of the Massachusetts Building Trades Council. For those of you who don't know what that is, we're the umbrella organization for 74 local unions all across Massachusetts. We represent 75,000 men and women, mostly men, but men and women who work in the construction industry, earning good wages, good benefits, and a good quality of life, and good work opportunities, and good working conditions. We want to expand that out, because for too long, we've been fighting or working with one arm tied behind our backs. Because as I said, it's mostly men. Our predecessors missed the opportunity to bring the talent that's in this room and outside this room of too many women who've been frozen out for whatever reasons in the past or never saw the opportunities or weren't aware of them, and we're trying to change that. I think this is a golden opportunity. We spend $44 million a year, just the building trades and our contractors, at training facilities all across Massachusetts. What an honor it is to be here today speaking to such an important group of educators, union officials, and business partners who have made such a significant difference in the lives of so many. I am very excited to be speaking to you today at such an incredible event that allows each of us enrolled in non-traditional programs to discover the opportunities that lie within our grasp. These opportunities that, although untraditional, give each of us countless ways to explore our interests and channel inner confidence in our abilities, which ultimately will demonstrate our strength as women in the work world. I knew I wanted to get into the union, so I went back to Boston. I applied to the Carpenters Union. I can say I'm a proud carpenter of Local 33. When you have a vision and you have goals, you're gonna attain those goals, but the road isn't always that easy. It's not always that quick. So during my time of being a mom and a wife, I knew my priority was my family. I wrote a nice letter to my union, was very supportive. I took a family leave of absence, but I continuously plucked away at going after my dreams, which was to be a carpenter. But if you can find your calling, if you can find that one thing that allows you to find happiness, inner peace, uh, something that you might do for free, that's, that's when you know that you found your calling. And for me, it was carpentry. And for me, it was getting into the union. When you know what you want to do, stick with it. Don't let someone else's insecurities be the reason why you don't accomplish your goals or accomplish the things that you want to do in life. 
What, what do you do when you have members of your field that don't want to cooperate? These are the things that I come against every single day, but I embrace it because I know that's the culture of this industry that we're in. We're going to find a little bit of opposition, but it's also a beautiful place where you're going to make friends and you're going to find people here, men and women, that are supportive of your goals and what you want to do.